Well, in many cases, it makes sense to uh, check for absolute convergence first. That's what the note is saying. Because absolute convergence implies conditional convergence. Now, be aware, in many cases, the, the, the terms in the series are positive, so this is moot. This point is moot, right? In many of the series we looked at, the terms were positive. So, okay, when you check for convergence on a series with positive terms, you're checking for absolute convergence automatically. But when it matters, when some of the terms could be negative, uh, then you might want to check uh, for absolute convergence first because might, you might get a simpler formula for your AN like in that first example. So when, when applicable, check for absolute convergence first. That's what the note should say. So uh, this is the most important test, by the way, so far. This is it. Ratio test, it's often used when AN involves exponential functions and factorials. So let's let uh, the sum n equals one to infinity a and B, a series with non-zero terms. Three situations we want to look at. Number one, if the limit as n goes to infinity of this, the absolute value of this ratio, a n plus one over a n equals some finite number L. And we want it to be a constant finite number L. And it turns out that that's less than one then the, the series will converge, at, not just converge, but converge absolutely. Okay, that's what that part after the comma says. Then this, the sum of the absolute value of AN converges. That means it converges absolutely. And then number two, if that limit of the absolute value of the ratio AN plus one to AN is greater than one, then the series diverges. And number three, if that limit uh, of absolute value of a n plus one divided by a n equals one, the, the test is, it doesn't tell you anything. It's inconclusive. So I, I'm not gonna try to do the proof here for you. I don't have time. And you're probably breathing a sigh of relief. But basically, uh, you use comparison. You can compare under these conditions uh, where l is less than one. You can, to, to do the proof, and I'll let you read about in the book, but you can compare this series uh, and really when I say compare, you're really talking about the absolute value of the AN. So compare that to a convergent geometric series. And it's, it's not that hard to do, but we can't prove everything in here. So th that's how it's done anyway. And then that's for number one. And then for number two, you can show it diverges using the nth term test for divergence. And then for number three, I can show you it's inconclusive by talking about two P series. The sum n equals one to infinity of one over n, um, and the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n squared. We know this first guy does what? We know it diverges. And then the second guy does what? Converges. Because in the first one, P is equal to one. In the second one, P is equal to two. But it turns out if you look at the limit of their a n plus one divided by a n absolute value wise, not that it matters because they're positive uh, series anyway, um, it turns out in both of those, you'll get one. So for both, both of these, I'll let you check that on your own. It's not hard, but if you check that the sum of, you know, individually, th check this one, that's a n when you do, do that check, and then that's a n when you do the sep check separately. But for both of them, this limit of this ratio will equal one. Yet, the first one converges, the second one diverges. So you get no information, in other words. So number three, if you get that limit equals one, tells us nothing. So here we go, uh, part A, the sum n equals one to infinity, n squared over two to the n, does it converge? Note that a n is greater than zero for all n. Uh, note that if that's true, then convergence implies absolute convergence. So in other words, uh, if you're summing positive terms, you don't really need the absolute values. Okay, so think about what it says. The, the ratio test says, you want to examine this ratio. The absolute value of a n plus one 
divided by a n. So let's examine that ratio. Now here, n squared divided by two to the n, positive. So do I need absolute values? No. But I put it at the very beginning just to remind you. Okay, so what, what is a n plus one, you guys? So this is a n. What's a n plus one? So absolute value. Just stick in, an, uh, uh, stick in a plus one wherever you see an n. n plus one quantity squared over two to the n plus one. And then you have to divide that whole thing by just the original formula, n squared divided by two to the n. Now I'm gonna drop the absolute values in the next step because again, everything, you know, the numerator is positive, the denominator is positive. And actually, I don't normally show this step when you're dealing with a fraction as your formula for an, because you flip and multiply when you divide, right? So I'll, I'll, after this example, I'll go right to here and say, whoops, drop the absolute values for this case. If, it's ne if it goes negative, you don't drop the absolute values. Uh, n plus one squared over two to the n plus one. Okay, you're dividing by n squared over two to the n, which is the same as multiplying by two to the n over n squared. So this is the step I would go to right away. Any questions there? And then uh, let's simplify. What I so I'm gonna rearrange the division and multiplication. So I'm gonna write n plus one squared over n squared. And then what is two to the n divided by two to the n plus one? Where does the power of two land? Where at? On the, bottom. on the bottom. So n factors of two cancel on top and you're left with one factor of two, two to the one on the bottom. And then if you, if you want, you could put that two, it kind of looks nicer if you put it in front of the n squared, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, check that out, do you believe it? All I wrote down was the ratio, a n plus one over a n, absolute values in this case don't matter because everything's positive and I simplified. All I've done is algebra so far. What does this guy converge to? I mean, if it helps multiply out the numerator, yeah. If you multiply out the numerator, you get uh, n squared plus two n plus one on top. And you're in that one situation uh, where it's a rational function, and I tell you, okay, if it's a rational function, oh, it's n squared, by the way. If it's a rational function, I let you just take, and the degrees are equal, numerator and denominator. To, to find the limit, remember, we wanna find the limit of this thing as n goes to infinity. To find that limit, you can just take the ratio of the lead coefficients when it's a rational function. So I'm gonna use the arrow notation for convergence instead of introducing the LIM notation at this point so that I can just say this guy converges to one half, right? The ratio of the lead coefficients, one over two, because the degrees are equal. When it's a rational function, I'm not gonna require you to prove that. It's, you know, you've done enough of that. Congratulations, <laughs> you've done enough of that. Now, this is the L. What does it have to be less than to get convergence? One. one. So you just make, it is less than one, so we make that statement. This is less than one. So you wanna compare it with one. If it's bigger than one, you say it diverges. If it's less than one, you say, the, the series converges. That's the ratio test. So the series converges by uh, the ratio test. That's, that's it. Now, if you're not comfortable with the arrow notation, what does this arrow notation mean? It means you'd have to write down separately the limit as n goes to infinity of you know, the multiplied out form is n squared plus 2n plus 1 over 2n squared. Uh, and then you, could, you would use equals 1 half. So that's an alternative way to do it. And then you would compare that with 1. So, so this part, you could replace this part with what I have up here. But I prefer the arrow notation. Either one is fine. And you don't have to drag the limit notation all the way to the end. You can just 
bring it in and burn it? Well, the point is I didn't bring in the limit notation at all. I used the arrow for the, for the convergence. Yeah. But this means the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy. Yeah. That's the meaning of that arrow. Yep. So we don't have a right absolute convergence. Well, in this case, it's obvious. In other cases, I will have you write it. So let's go ahead and put it in now. That's a good point just to get you used to it. But I mean, you know, I mean, well, okay. If, if it's a series of positive terms, then then um, you know, automatically it's absolutely convergent. So the series converges absolutely. But it's a, it's a fair point. It doesn't hurt to be very precise by the ratio test. 